in his spring, moonless night in the small town, starless and Bible black, the cobble streets silent, the hunch quarters and rabbit's wood, limping invisible down the slow black, slow black, crow black, fishing boat bobbing sea. The houses are blind as moles, so moles see fine tonight through the snouting velvet dangles, or blind as Captain Cat. There in the muffled middle, by the pump and the town clock, the shops in mourning, the welfare hall in widow's weeds, and all the people of the lulled and dumbfound town are sleeping now. Hush, the babies are sleeping, the farmers, the fishers, the tradesmen and pensioners. Cobbler, school teacher, postman, and publican, the undertaker, and the fancy woman, drunkard, dressmaker, preacher, policeman, the wet foot cockle women, and the tidy wives, young girls like bedded soft, or glide in their dreams with rings and trousseau, bridesmaided by glowworms, down the aisles of the organ playing wood, the boys are dreaming wicked, or of the bucking ranches of the night and the jolly Roger sea. And the anthracite statues of the horses sleep in the fields, and the cows in the byres, and the dogs in the wet nose yards, and the cats nap in the slant corners, or lope sly, streaking and needling on the one cloud of the roofs. You can hear the dew falling, and the hushed town breathing. Only your eyes are unclosed to see the black and folded town, fast and slow, asleep. You alone can hear the invisible star fall. The darkest before dawn, minutely dew-grazed stir of the black, dab-filled sea, where the Arethusa, the Curlew, and the Skylark, Zanzibar, Rhiannon, the Rover, the Cormorant, and the Star of Wales tilt and ride. Listen, it is night moving in the streets. The processional, salt swell, musical wind down Carnation Street and Cockle Row. It is the grass growing on Clarago Pim, dewfall, starfall, and the sleep of <coughs> birds in milkwood. Look, it is night, dumbly, royally, winding through the Coronation cherry trees, going through the graveyard of Bethesda, with winds gloved and folded, and dew doffed, tumbling by the sailors' arms. Time passes. Listen. Time passes. Come closer now. Only you can hear the houses sleeping in the streets. In the slow, deep salt and silent black bandage night. Only you can see in the blinded bedrooms. The combs and petticoats over the chairs. The jugs and basins. The glasses of tea thou shalt not on the wall. And the yellowing <coughs> dicky bird watching pictures of the dead. Only you can hear and see behind the eyes of the sleepers, the movements and countries and mazes and colours, and dismays and rainbows, and tunes and wishes, and flight and fall and despairs and big seas of their dreams. From where you are, you can hear their dreams. Captain Cat, the retired blind sea captain, sleep in his bunk, the seashell, ship in bottle, ship shape, best cabin of schooner house. Dreams of never such seas. As Annie beswamped the decks of his SS Kidwelly, bellying over the bedclothes, jellyfish slippery sucking him down, salt deep into the daily dark, where the fish come biting out, and nibble him down to his wishbone, and the long brown nuzzle up to him. Remember me, Captain. You're going to Williams. I lost my step in Nantucket. Do you see me, Captain? The white bone talking. I am Tom Fred the Donkey Man. We shared the same girl once. Her name was Mrs. Probert. Rosie Probert, 33 Dock Lake. Come on up, boys. I'm dead. Hold me, Captain. I'm Joan Jarvis. Come to a bad end. Very enjoyable. I'm Fred Pomeroy Jones, sea lawyer, born in Mumbles, sung like a linnet, crowned you with a flagon, tattooed with mermaids, cursed like a dredger, died of blisters. I'm this fella to your hold is. Carly Bevan. <laughs> Tell my auntie who's been a pawn the Ormolu clock. <laughs> I am, Curly. Tell my missus, no, I never. I never done what you said. I never. Yes, they did. And who brings coconuts and shawls and parrots to my Gwen now? How is it above? Is there rum and lava bread? Muslims and robins? Concertinas? Ebenezer's <laughs> bell? Fighting and onions? And sparrows and daisies? Tiddlers and a jonjo? Buttermilk and whippets? Rockabye babies? Washing on the bread? <laughs> and old girls in the smoke? How's the tennis and dowries? Who melts the cows and mice with? When she smiles, is her dimples? What's the smell of parsley? Oh, my dear dears. Row in the spring moon 
English night. Miss Price, dressmaker and sweet shopkeeper, dream of her lover, tall as the town clock tower, Samson Sear, gold mane, wagging thigh and piping hot, thunderbolt bass and barnacle breast, flailing up the cockles with eyes like blow lamps, and scooping low over her lonely, loving, hot water bottled body. Ravana Wee Price. Mr. Rock Evans. I'm a draper mad with love. I love you more than all the flannelette and calico, candlewick, dirty, crashing merino, to sore, craton, crepin, muslin, poplin, ticking and twill, and the whole cloth all of the world. I've come to take you away to my poem on the hill, where the change hums on wires. Throw away your little bed socks and your Welsh walnut jacket. I will warm the sheets like an electric toaster, and I will lay by your side like the Sunday roast. Now I will lie through a wallet and forget me not blue, for the money to be comfy. I will warm your heart by the fire, so that you may slip it in under your vest and the shop is closed. Mavanry, Mavanry, before the mice gnaw at your bottom drawer, will you say, Yes, Mog, yes, Mog, yes, yes, yes! And the bells of the tills of the town shall ring out for our wedding. <laughs> The drifting sea dark street now, where in a little pink eyed cottage next to the undertaker, lie alone the seventeen snoring gentle stone of Mr. Waldo, rabbit catcher, barber, herbalist, cat doctor, quack, his fat pink hands, palms up, over the edge of his patchwork quilt, his black boots neat and tidy in the washing basin, his bowler on a nail above the bed, a milk stout and a slice of cold bread pudding under the pillow, and Dripping in the dark, he dreams of his mother. This little piggy went to the market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef, and this little piggy had none. And this little piggy went. Wee 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 wee. Waldo! 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 Yes, Waldo. What do the neighbors say? What do the neighbors say? Poor Mrs. Waldo. What she puts up with? Never should have married if she didn't have to. Same as her mother. There's a husband. Bah! And the father. And you know where he ended. Up in the asylum crying for his ma. Every Saturday he hasn't got a leg. And carrying on with that Mrs. Beatty Morris. Up in the car. And seen her baby. It's got his nose. Oh, it makes my heart bleed. What did he do for a drink? He sold the pianola. And her sewing machine. Mm. Falling in the gutter. Talking to the lamppost. Using language. Singing. In the woods. Poor Mrs. Waldo. Oh, Waldo! Waldo! Hush, love. Hush. I'm widow of Waldo now. Waldo! Waldo! Yes, our mom. Well, what will the neighbors say? Well, what will the neighbors? Blast the chimney, ringing doorbells, breaking windows, making mud pies, stealing currants, talking words, sawing in the bushes, playing mooching, setting your bed without any supper, giving centipods and lock them in the dark. Off to the reformatory. <laughs> Learning with a slipper on his BTM. Waldo, Waldo, what are you doing, our Matty? Give us a kiss, Matty Richards. Give us a penny then. I only got a half penny. Lips is a penny. Mr. Waldo, will you take this woman, Massey Richard? Josie Prothero, Effie Bevan, Lilda Bluepot, Mrs. Flushing. But I'm with Bowen! <gasps> to be your awful wedding wife. No, no, no. <laughs> I must dress behind the curtain and put on my apron. I must blow my nose. In the garden, if you please. And a piece of tissue paper, which I afterwards burn. I must take my salts, which are nature's friend. I must boil the drinking water, because of germs. I must make my herb tea, which is free from cannon. And have a charcoal biscuit, which is good for me. I may smoke one pipe of basil mixture. In the woodshed, if you please. And dust the powder and spray the canary. I must put on rubber gloves and search the peak for fleas. I must dust the blinds, and then I must raise them. 
And before you let the sun in, mind it wipes its shoes. In winter violence, gossip violence, daughter, school teacher, dreaming deep in a slaughterhouse that has chintz curtains and a three-piece suite. Daintily fair, it's under a fluttering hammock of chicken feathers. And find, with no surprise, a small, rough, ready man with a bushy tail winking in a paper carrier. At last, my love! My foxy darling, sighs Gossamer, and the bushy tail wags rude and ginger. Help! cries Oregon, Oregon, the organ of Sinister Street. There's perturbation of music in Coronation Street. Shoots down the wild giblets. The owls are hunting. Look, over the Bethesda gravestones, one hoots and swoops and catches a mouse by Hannah Reeves, beloved wife. In Coronation Street, which you alone can see, it is so dark under the chapel in the skies. The Reverend Eli Jenkins, poet, preacher, turns in his deep towards dawn sleep and dreams of a steadfast owl. He intricately rhymes to the music of Croof and Kickhorn all night long in his druid seedy nightly in a beer tent black with parks. Mr. Pugh, schoolmaster, fast asleep, pretends to be sleeping, spies Foxy around the droop in his nightcap band, whistles off. Murder! Mrs. Organ Morgan, grocerous, coiled grey like a doormat, her paws to her ears, conscious. Silence! She sleeps very dulcet in a clover wool, and trumpeting organ Morgan at her side snores no louder than a spider. Mary Ann Sailor is dreamed of. The Garden of Eden. She comes in her smock frock and clogs. Away from the cool scrubbed cobbled kitchen, with the Sunday school pictures on the whitewashed wall, and the farmer's almanac hung above the settle, and the sides of bacon on the ceiling hooks, and goes down the cockle shell path to the apple pie kitchen garden, ducking under the jippo's clothes pegs, catching her apron on the black herd bushes, past bee and rose, and onion bed, and tomatoes ripening on the wall, towards the old man playing the harmonium in the orchard, and sits down on the grass at his side, and shells the green peas that grow up to the lap of her frock that brushes the jib. In Donkey Street, so fur and sleep, die bread. Holly Garter, no good boy, 
Lord Cutglass. Sigh before the dawn that is about to be and dream of Harems. Babies. Nothing. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Time passes. Listen, time passes. An owl flies home past Bethesda to a chapel in an oak, and the dawn inches up. Stand on this hill. This is Claragub Hill. Old as the hills, high, cool, and green. And from this small circle of stones, made not by druids, but by Mrs. Bynon's Billy, you can see all the town below you, sleeping in the first of the dawn. You can hear the lovesick wood pigeons mooning in bed. A dog barks in his sleep, farm yards away. The town ripples like a lake in the waking haze. Less than 500 souls inhabit the three quaint streets and the few narrow bylanes and scattered farmsteads that constitute this small, decaying watering place, which may indeed be called a backwater of life, without disrespect to its natives who possess to this day a salty individuality of their own. The main street, Coronation Street, consists for the most part of humble, two-storied houses, many of which attempt to achieve some measure of gaiety by prinking themselves out in crude colours and by the liberal use of pinkwash, though there are remaining a few 18th century houses of more pretension, if, on the whole, in a sad state of disrepair. Though there is little to attract the hill climber, the health seeker, the sportsman, or the weekending motorist. The contemplative may, if sufficiently attracted to spare its some leisurely hours, find in its cobbled streets and its little fishing harbour, in its several curious customs, and in the conversation of its local characters, some of that picturesque sense of the past so frequently lacking in towns and villages which have kept more abreast of the times. The River Dowie is said to be abound in trout, but is much poached. The one place of worship with its neglected graveyard is of no architectural interest. The principality of the sky lies the sound. Over our green hill, the spring morning, larked and crowed and fell. Sweeter bards than I to sing their praise this beauteous morning. By mountains where King Arthur dreams, by Penman Mar defiant, Clargob Hill a molehill seems, a pygmy to a giant. By Carrick Kennan, King of Time, our here on head is only, a bit of stone with seaweed bread, where gulls come to be lonely. A tiny dingle is milkwood, by golden grove neath ronker, but let me choose an oh I should, love all my life and longer. Stroll among the trees and stray in Goose God Lane on Donkey Down and hear the Dowie sing all day and never, never leave the town. The Reverend Jenkins closes the front door. His morning service is over. Now woken at last by the out of bed sleepy head, Polly put the kettle on town hall bell. Lily Smalls, Mrs. Bynes' treasure, comes downstairs from the dream of royalty who all night long went larking with a full of sauce in the milk wood dark. Puts the kettle on the primus ring in Miss Bynum's kitchen, 
looks at herself in Mr. Bynum's shaving glass above the sink and sees. Oh, there's a face. Where'd you get your hair from? Got it from an old tomcat. Give it back then, love. Oh, there's a perm. Where'd you get your nose from, Lily? Got it from my father, silly. Got it on upside down. Oh, there's a conk. Look at your complexion. Oh no, you look. Needs a bit of makeup. Needs a veil. Now there's glamour. Where'd you get your smile, Lil? Never you mind, girl. Nobody loves you. That's what you think. Who is it loves you? I shan't tell. Come on, Lily. Cross your heart then. Cross my heart. She says softly. Her lips almost touching her reflection. She breathes the name and clouds the shaving glass. Lily! Yes, Mom? Where's my tea, girl? Where do you think? In the cat box? Coming up, Mom. Mr. Pew, in the schoolhouse opposite, picks up the morning tea to Mrs. Pew <laughs> and whispers on the stairs. Here is your arsenic, dear, and your weed killer biscuit. I've throttled your parky. I've spat your vases. I've put cheese in the mouse holes. Here's your <laughs> nice tea, dear. <laughs> Too much sugar. You haven't tasted it yet, dear. Too much milk, then. Has Mr. Jenkins said his poetry? Yes, dear. Then it's time to get up, pass my glasses. No, not my reading glasses. I want to look out. I want to see. Lily swallows the treasure down on her red knees, washing the front step. She's tucked her dress in her bloomers again. Oh, the baggage. DC Artilleries. Oxford, barge-booted, stamping out of handcuff house and heavy beef red hop. Black browed under his damp helmet. He's going to arrest Polly Garter, mark my words. But what for, dear? For having babies. <laughs> and lumbering down towards the strand to see that the sea is still there, Mary Ann the Sailors opens her bedroom window above the taproom and calls out to the heavens. I'm 85 years, three months and a day. <laughs> I'll say this for her, she never makes a mistake. Morgan Morgan on his bedroom window, playing chords <coughs> on the sill to the morning fish-like gulls who, heckling over donkey street, observe. Me, die bread, hurrying to the bakery, pushing in my shirt, tails, button in my waistcoat. King goes a button, why can't they sew them? No time for breakfast, nothing for breakfast. There's boys for you. Me, Mrs. Die bread one, Captain Shaw to know a corset, nice to be comfy, nice to be nice. Call me not the common sister of the neighbor. Oh, Mrs. Willy Nilly, can you spare us a loaf club? My bread forgot the bread. There's a lovely morning now. How are the boys this morning? Is it not great news? Mrs. Chase is dead. Come, Mrs. Willy Nilly. Me, <coughs> Mrs. Dye Bread, too. Gypsy to kill in a silky scarlet dress above my knees. Dirty, pretty knees. See my body through my dress, brown as a berry. High heel shoes with one heel missing. Tortoiseshell comb through my bright, black, slinky hair. Nothing else at all but a dab of scent. Lolling gaudy at the doorway. Tell your fortune in my tea leaves. Scowling at the sunshine, lighting up my pipe. Me, Lord Cockglass, in an old frock coat belonging to Eli Jenkins and a pair of postman pants from Professor Jumbo. Turning out of doors to empty shops. Mind the rover and running in again. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Me, no good boil, up to no good in the wash house. Me, Miss Price, in my pretty print house coat. Deft as a clothesline, navvy as jelly ring. Bent, pit pat back, to my egg in its cosy, my crisp toast fingers, my homemade plum and buttercup. Me, Molly Garter, under the washing line, giving the breast in the garden to my bonny new baby. Nothing grows in our garden, only washing and babies. And where their fathers live, my love, over the hills and far away. You're looking up at me now. I know what you're thinking. You poor little milky creature. You're thinking, you're no better than you should be, Polly. And that's good enough for me. Oh, isn't life a terrible thing, thank God. That frying pan spit. Heckles and cats purr in the kitchen. The town smells of seaweed and breakfast. All the way down from Bayview. In the sailor's arms where Mary Ann sailors. Praises the Lord who made porridge. Mr. Q, 
remembers ground glass as he juggles his omelets. Mrs. Pugh nags the sort cellar, willy nilly postman. Down to the last of his black brackish teeth and rumbles out badly, to the cloaking back where the hens twitch and grieve for their tea soaked socks. Mrs. Willy nilly, full of teeth to her double chin brim, broods and bubbles over her coven of kettles on the hissing hot range, always ready to steam open the mail. The Reverend Eli Jenkins finds a rhyme and dips his pen in cocoa. Lord Cutglass in his ticking kitchen scampers from clock to clock, a bunch of clock keys in one hand, a fish head in the other. Captain Cat in his galley. Blind and fine fingered, save the sea fry. <laughs> Shirts and shrouds and flowery blouses. 
and bellows to himself in the darkness behind his eye. I love Miss Price. Syrup is sold in the post office. A car drives to market for the fowls and a farmer. Milk churns stand at Coronation Corner like short silver policemen. And standing at the open window of Schooner House, blind Captain Cap hears all the mourning of the town. <laughs> won't have a gentleman in from Bill Twells because he'll sleep in the sheets. Mrs. Rose Codge, sister's twins, have got to have them out. Give me the parcel. It's for Mr. Pew, Mrs. Pew. Never you mind. What's inside it? A book called Lives of the Great <laughs> <Christmas. laughs> That's Manchester House. Morning, Mr. Edwards. Very small news. Mrs. Ogmore Pritchard won't have birds in the house, and Mr. Pew's now going to bother how to do it in Mrs. Pew. Have you got a letter from her? Mrs. Price loves you with all her heart. Smelling of lavender today. She's down to the last of the other flower wine, with the quince jam sparing up, and she's knitting roses on the doilies. Last week she sold three jars of boiled sweets, a pound of pop bugs, half a box of jelly babies, and six coloured photos of fairy goo. Yours forever, and the 21 X's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, willy nilly. She's a ruby. Here's my letter. Put it into her hands now. Mr. Waldo hurrying to the sailor's arms. Pint of stuff with an egg in it. a letter for him. Mr. Waldo. It's another fraternity song, Mr. Waldo. <sighs> Quick, Simba. Pint of stuff. With no egg in Organ Morgan's at it early. You can tell it's spring. People are moving now, up and down the cobbled street. All the women are out this morning, in the sun. There goes Mrs. Cherry. You can tell her by her trotters. Oh, she trots. It's a daisy. Who's that walking by the pump? Mrs. Floyd, flatfish. What can you talk about, flatfish? That's Mrs. Dye Bread One, waltzing up the street like a jetty. Every time she shakes, slap, slap, slap. Who's that? Mrs. Butcher Bynum with her pet black cat. Follows her everywhere. Meow and all. There goes Mrs. 23. Important. The sun gets up and goes down in her dew lap. When she shuts her eyes, it's night. High hills now in the morning too. Mrs. Rose Cottage's eldest maid. Seventeen and never being kissed. Oh ho. Going young and looking under my window at the 
you and then goes. She reminds me all the way. Can't hear what the women are gathering around the pump. Same as ever. Who's having a baby? Who's black to blind? Seen Polly Garden giving a belly an errand. There should be a law. Now the voices around the pump can see somebody coming. Hush. There's a hush. You can tell by the noise of the hush. It's Polly Garden. Hello, Polly, my love. Hello, Captain. Can you hear the dumb goose hiss of the wives as they cuddle and peck or flounce or to waddle away? Who cuddled you when? Which of their gandering hobbies moaned in Milkwood through your naughty mothering arms and gaudy like a wardrobe love and scrubbed the floors of the welfare hall for the mother's union social dance? Your one mother won't wriggle your roly poly bone or pat her fat little buttery feet in that wedding ring holy tonight. Though the waltzing breadwinners snatched from the cozy smoke of the sailor's arms will grizzle and mope. Too late, Gawk. Too late. But the town's half over with its morning. The morning's busy as bees. There's the clip clop of horses on the sun honeyed cobbles of the humming streets, hammering of horseshoes. Gobble, crack, and cackle. Tom tit twitter from the bird out spouse. Spring on donkey down. Bread is baking, pigs are grunting. Chop goes the butcher, milk churns bell. Tills ring, sheep cough, dogs shout, souls sing. Oh, the spring whinny and morning move from the cloth dancing farm. The gulls gab and rabble on the boat bobbing river and sea. And the cockles bubbling in the sand. Scamper of sanderlings, curlew cry, crow call, pigeon coo. Clock strike, bull bellow, and the ragged gabble of the bear garden school as the women scratch and babble in Mrs. Organ Morgan's general shop where everything is sold. Custom buckets, henna, rat traps, shrimp net, sugar, stamps, confetti, paraffin, hatchets, whistles. Mrs. Aldmore Pritchard, la -di da Got a man of bullets well, and he got a telescope to the birds. Willy Nilly says, remember her first husband? He didn't need a telescope. He looked at them addressing through the keyhole. And he used to shout tally ho. But Mr. Aldmore was a proper gentleman. Even though I call his colleague. See Mrs. Butcher Bynum. She said Bynum the dogs in the mincer. Oh, go on, he's pulling our leg. Now don't you dare tell her that. There's a deer. Or she'll think he's trying to pull it off and eat it. That's a nasty lot of right here. When you come to think. Look at that no good boy on now. Too lazy to wipe his nails. And going out fishing every day. And only ever brought back was a corset. Been in the water a week. And look at Ocky Milkman's wife that nobody's ever seen. He keeps her in the cupboard with the empties. I think of dive right with two wives. One for the daytime. One for the night. Men are brutes on the quiet. And how's Mr. Organ Morgan, Mrs. Morgan? You look deadly. It's organ, organ all the time with him. Up every night till midnight playing that organ. Oh, I'm a martyr to music! <laughs> Outside, the sun springs down on the rough and tumbling town. It runs through the hedges of Goosegog Lane, cuffing the birds to sing. Spring whip screams and cockle row and the shells ring out. Clara Gulf, this snip of a morning is wild fruit and warm. The streets, fields, sands and waters springing in the young sun. Mary Ann Sailors says very softly to herself as she looks out at Clara Gulf Hill from the street where she was born. In spring, in Clara Gulf, in the sun, in my old age. And this is the chosen land. And in willy nilly the postman's dark and sick feeling, dark misty pygmy kitchen with a spitting gas kettle throb and hop on the range. Mrs. Willy Nilly steams open Mr. Mark Edwards' letter to Miss Mumongo Price <laughs> and reads it aloud to Mr. Willy Nilly by the squint of the spring sun. From Manchester House, Clarabo. So prop Mr. Mark Edwards, late to linen draper, haberdasher, master tailor, costumier for West End negligee, lingerie, tea gowns, Evening dress, trousseau, layouts. Among our satisfied customers, ministers of religion and JPs. Victims by appointment, advertising weekly in the Twelve Bugle. Beloved Robin 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 Christ, Christ, my bride in heaven, I love you until death do us part, and then we shall be together forever and ever. A new parcel of ribbons arrived and come out from today, all the colours in the rainbow. I wish I could tie a ribbon in your hair. A white one, but it cannot be. I dreamt last night you were dripping wet. You sat in my lap as the Reverend Jenkins went down the street. I see you got a mermaid in your lap, he said. And he tipped his hat. He was a proper Christian, not like Cherry Owen. 
I said, just sort of thrown it back in, he said. <laughs> Business is very poorly. Holly Gallagher bought two Gallagher's with roses, but no stockings. So why is that, I say? <laughs> Mr. Waldo tried to send me a woman to Nighty outside. He said he found it. We all know where. I sold Sinbad Sailor a pack of pins to pick his teeth. If this goes on, I should be in the workhouse. My heart is in your bosom, and yours in mine. May God be with you, my family Christ, and keep you lovely for me in this heavenly mansion. I must stop now and remain. Your eternal, Mark Edwards. And then, a little message with the rubber stamp. Shut the box! And willy nilly rumbling, jockeys out to the three seated shack in the back of the House of Commons, where the hens weep and seize in sudden springtime. Herring goes, heckling down to the harbour. Where the fishermen spit and prop the morning up, and I the fishy sea to the sea's end as it lulls in blue. Green and gold money, tobacco, tinned salmon, hats with feathers, pots of fish paste, warm for the winter to be. Weave and leap in it, rich and slippery, in the flash and shapes of fishes through the cold sea streets. But with blue, lazy eyes, the fishermen gaze at that milkmaid whispering water with no rock or ripple, as though it blew great guns and serpents and typhooned the town. Too rough for fishing today. And they thank God, and God with the gold for luck. And moss slow and silent to make their way uphill, from the still, still sea towards the sailors' arms. And as the children's bank can scamper off and singing out of school into the dragon tail yard, Captain Cat at his window said softly to himself the words of their song. <laughs> I love the 
with jelly and coals. There goes the record. Says Mr. Waldo, at the smoke tearing brown window of the unwashed sailor's arms. With his bra in his oats. Put him up some bath. I'm on the tree for today. And the silent fishermen flush down their pints. Oh, Mr. Waldo. Sighs in bad sailors. I don't want that bossing or boy There's a lady all over. And Mr. Waldo, who is thinking of a woman, soft as Eve and sharp as Sayataka, answers. No lady I know is. If only grandma would lie, cross my heart, I'd get down on my knees, Mr. Waldo. I'd say, Miss Gossamer, I'd say, Pew reads as he forks the trout meat in 
From lives of the grace poisoners, he has dabbled a plain brown paper cover and the book. Slyly, between slow mouthfuls, he sides by up with Mrs. Pew, poisons her with his eye, then goes on reading. He underlines certain passages and smiles in secret. <laughs> Persons with manners do not read at table, says Mrs. Pew. She swallows a digestive tablet as big as a horse pill, washing it down with clouded pea soup water. Some persons were brought up in pigsties. Pigs don't read a table, dear. Bitterly, she flicks dust from the broken cruet. It settles on the pie in thin nap rain. Pigs can't read, my dear. I know one who can. <laughs> in the hissing laboratory of his wishes. Amongst bad bats and jeroboams, he tiptoes through spinnies of murdering herbs, agony dancing in his crucibles. And mixes, especially for Mrs. Pew, a venomous porridge unknown to toxicologists that will scald and viper through her until her ears fall off like figs, her toes grow big and black as balloons, and steam comes screaming out of her navel. <laughs> you know best? Dear. Mr. Pew says, and quick as a flash, she ducks her in rat soup. What's that book by your trough, Mr. Pew? It's a theological work, my dear. Lives of the great saints. Mrs. Pew <laughs> smiles. An icicle forms in the cold air of the dining hall. I saw you talking to a saint this morning. Saint Polly Garter. She was martyred again last night. Miss Morgan Morgan saw her talking to Mr. Waldo. And when they saw me, they pretended they were looking for nests, said Mrs. Organ Morgan, her mouth full of fishes and pelicans. <laughs> but you don't go nesting in long combinations, I said to myself. Like That's Mr. Walter was wearing, and you're dressed nearly over your head like Polly Garters. <laughs> they didn't fool me. One big bird gulp, and the flounder's gone. She licks her lips and goes stabbing again. And when you think of all them babies she's got, then all I can say is, she want to give up bird lesson is all I can say. It isn't a great hobby at all for a woman who can't say no, even to midgets. Remember Bob Smith? Ah, he was no bigger than a baby and he gave her two. <laughs> ah, but they're two nice boys, I will say that. Frank's bit and Arthur. Sometimes I like Frank best and sometimes I like Arthur. What do you like best, Organ? Organ! Oh, Bach, without a doubt. Bach every time for me. Organ Morgan, you haven't been listening to a word I've said. It's organ organ all the time with you. And she bursts into tears, and in the middle of her salty howling, <laughs> nimbly spears of blackfish and pelicans at home. And then Palestrina, says Organ Morgan. <laughs> Persons with manners, snaps Mrs. Cole Pew. Do not nod at table. Mr. Pew clears away. <laughs> He puts on a soft, soaping smile. It is sad and grey under his nicotine, egg-yellow, weeping walrus Victorian moustache, worn thick and long in memory of Dr. Cole. <laughs> you should wait until you retire to your style, says Mrs. Pew, sweet as a razor. His measly, fawning, quarter smile freezes. Sly and silent, he foxes into his chemist's den. And there, in a hiss and prussic circle, of cauldrons and phials full to the brim with the pox and the black death, cooks up a fricassee of deadly nightshade, nicotine, hot froth, cyanide, and bat spit. For a salad tight hag and bed nag of a poker back to no cracker wife. <laughs> I beg your pardon, my dear. He murmurs with a wheel. Hourglass chimers twitch with clocks, 
Flux the plug tunes, the Sylvius Fox or Black Bells and Lava, Niagara Flux, the Cataract and Fix, Old Time Weaving Fox or Ebony Beards, Flux with No Hands, Forever Drumming Out Time. Without ever knowing what time it is, his 66 singers are all set at different hours. Lord Cutglass lives in a house and a life at siege. Any minute or dark day now, the unknown enemy will loot and savage downhill but they will not catch him napping. 66 different times in his fish slimy kitchen. Ping, strike, tick, chime, and talk. And lust and lilt and lather and body of spring means to Lord Cutglass nothing but another nearness to the tribes and navies of the last black day, who will sear and pillage down Armageddon Hill to his tick-tock dust gravel shack at the bottom of the town that is born head over bells in love. Remember me. I have forgotten you. 
I'm going into the darkness of the darkness forever. I have forgotten that I was ever born. Look, says the child to her mother. Captain Cat is crying. He's crying all over his nose. He's got a nose like strawberries. And then she forgets him too. No good boy gave me three pennies yesterday, but I wouldn't. No good boy goes out fishing in the dingy Zanzibar in the still middle of the blue bag bay. He catches a whalebone corset. It is all he has caught all day. Bloody funny fish. Mrs. Dye bread too gypsies up his mind's slow eye, dressed only in a bangle. Would you like this nice white corset, Mrs. Dye bread too? No, I would not. And a bite of my little apple. <laughs> he offers with no hope. She shakes her brass nightgown and he chases her out of his mind. I want to be a good boy, but no one will let me. The land fades, the sea flocks silently away. The afternoon hums like lazy bees round the flowers round May Rose Cottage. Nearly asleep in the field of nanny goats who hum and gently butt the sun, she blows love on a puffball. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. The dirty old fool. Lazily she lies alone in clover and sweet grass. Seventeen and never been sweet in the grass. Ho oh, ho. The Reverend Eli Jenkins, inky in his cool front parlor or poem room, tells only the truth in his life work. The population, main industry, shipping, history, topography, flora and fauna of the town he worships in. The White Book of Clargov. Portraits of famous bards and preachers, all fur and wool from the squint to the kneecap, hang over him, heavy as sheep. Next to faint lady watercolours of pale green milkwood, like a lettuce salad dime, his mother, propped against the pot in a pan, with her wedding ring waist and bust, like a black cloth dining table, suffers in her stays. Oh, angel, be careful there with your knives and forks. He prays, there is no known likeness of his father as thou. Who, undogged collared because of his little weakness, was sighted to the bone when harvest by mistake, when sleeping with his weakness in the form, he lost all ambition and died with one leg. Poor dad. Grieves the Reverend Eli. To die of drink and agriculture. <laughs> in Salt Lake Farm, Bessie Bighead hoes the cattle in the milking and greets them by the name she gave them when they were maidens. Peg, Meg, Buttercup, Moll, Bam from the Castle, Theodosia, and Daisy. In her life long low light, holily Bessie milks the fond leg eyed cows as dusk showers slowly down over byre, sea, and town. Look up Bessie Bighead in the White Book of Clargo, and you will find the few haggard grass and the one poor glittering thread of her history laid out there with as much love and care as a lock of hair from a first lost love. Conceived in milkwood, born in a barn, wrapped in paper and left on a doorstep, big-headed and bass-voiced. She grew in the dark until long dead Gomer Owen kissed her when she wasn't looking because he was dared. Now in the light she'll work, sing, milk, say the cow's sweet names and sleep until the night sucks out her soul and spits it into the sky. Now the town is dusk, each cobble, goose, and gooseberry street is a thoroughfare of dust, and dusk and ceremonial dust, and night's first darkening snow, and the sleep of birds drift under and through the live dusk of this place of love. Clargob is the capital of dusk. This is all more Pritchard. At the first drop of the dusk shower, seals all in her sea view door draws the germ-free blinds, sits erect as a dry dream on a high-backed hygienic chair, and wills herself to cold, quick sleep. At once, at twice, Mr. Ogmore and Mr. Pritchard, who all dead day long have been gossiping like ghosts in the woodshed, 
planning the loveless destruction of their glass widow. Reluctantly sigh and sidle into her clean home. After you, Mr. Rockmore. No, after you, Mr. Pritchard. No, no, Mr. Rockmore, you widow her first. <laughs> <laughs> the tears where their eyes once were, they lose and grumble. Husband! She says in her sleep. There is acid love in her voice for one of the two shambling phantoms. Mr. Ogmore hopes that it is not for him. So does Mr. Pritchard. <laughs> I love you both. Oh, Mrs. Ogmore. Oh, Mrs. Pritchard. Soon it will be time to go to bed. Tell me your tasks in order. We must take our pyjamas from the door marked pyjamas. And then we must take them off. Down the <laughs> May Rose Cottage, still lying in clover, listens to the nanny goat's tune. I'm fast. I'm a bad lot. God will strike me dead. I'm 17. I'll go to him. She tells the goats. You just wait. I'll sin till I blow up. She lies deep uh -huh. and waits for the worst to happen. The goats champ and sneer at the doorway of Bethesda House. The Reverend Eli Jenkins recites to Clarabel Hill the sunset poem. Every morning when I wake, dear Lord, a little prayer I make. Oh, please to keep thy lovely eye on all poor creatures born to die. And every evening at sundown, I ask a blessing on the town. For whether we last the night or no, I'm sure is always touch and go. We are not holy, bad, or good, who live our lives under milk wood. But thou, I know, wilt be the first see our best side, not our worst. Oh, let us see another day. Bless us this holy night, I pray. And to the sun we all will bow and say goodbye, but just for now. And Lily Smalls is up to no good bio in the wash house. And Terry Owen, sober as Sunday as he is every day of the week, goes up happy as Saturday to get drunk as a deacon as he does every night. I always say, She's got two husbands, says Cherry Owen. One drunk and one sober. <laughs> Mrs. Cherry simply says, Aren't I a lucky woman? Because I love them both. Evening Cherry, evening Sinbad. While you have too much, sailor's arms are always open. Sinbad suffers to himself, heartbroken. Oh, Gossamer, open yours! <laughs> Skipping. Dancing is a natural. Right, as he says, Cherry Owen, who is just down 17 pints of flat, warm, thin, Welsh, bitter beer. <laughs> a farmer's lantern glimmers, a spark on Claragob Hill. Claragob Hill writes the Reverend Jenkins in his poem. Claragob Hill, that mystic tumulus, the memorial of peoples that dwelt in the region of Claragob before the Celts left the land of summer and the old wizards made themselves a wife out of flowers. Blind Captain Cash climbs into his bunk. Like a cat, he sees in the dark. Through the voyages of his tears, he sails to see the dead. Dancing William, still dancing. John of Jarvis, still. Rosie, with God, she has forgotten darling. The dead come out in their Sunday best. Listen to the night breaking. Organ Morgan goes to chapel to play the organ. He plays it all at night to anyone who will listen. 
Mr. Mark Edwards and Miss Mubamwe Price, happily apart from one another at the top and sea end of the town, write their every night letters of love and desire. In the warm white bulk of Clara Gulf, you will find the little maps of the islands of their contentment. Oh, my Mark, I am yours forever. And she looks around with pleasure at her own neat, never dull room, which Mr. Mark Edwards will never enter. <laughs> Come to my arms, Mubanwe. And he hugs his lovely money to his own heart. <laughs> and Mr. Waldo, drunk in the dusky wood, hugs his lovely Polly Garter under the eyes and the rattling tongues of the neighbours and the birds. And he does not care. He smacks his live red lips. But it is not his name that Polly Garter whispers as she lies under the oak and loves him back. I always think as we tumble into bed Six feet deep, oh, that name sings in the cold earth. Oh, dead, dead, dead. The thin night darkens. A breeze from the creased water sighs the streets under milk-making wood. The wood was every tree foot's cloven in the black, glad sight of the hundreds of lovers that is a God-built garden to Mary Ann the Sailor. Who knows, there is heaven on earth, and the chosen people of his kind fire in Clara Gove's land. That is the fair day farmhands wantoning ignorant chapel of bride's beds. And to the Reverend Eli Jenkins, a green leaf sermon on the innocence of man. The suddenly wind-shaken wood springs awake for the second dark time this one spring day. Thank you. 